making a game from scratch is a super complicated endeavor. Or is it? In the last video I explained that I will be making my game, the Wizard School Simulator, from scratch. And today I will be taking you through the three fundamental elements of any game and how I implemented those in my game. So by the end of this video you might not think that making a game from scratch is that complicated. Now, I happen to use C++ for my game. So if you're wondering what all those stars are through my code, don't worry, I don't know either. But seriously, if you are confused about pointers, then just let me know and I can cover it in another video. Anyway, moving on. A game only has three fundamental elements that are done in a loop over and over again. These are gathering input, updating the world and rendering it. Now let's start at the first step, gathering input. I use a library called glfw for creating a window and capturing its events. And this library is very nice because it saves me the headache of having to manually create a window on every different kind of system. Now when I create a window I can bind the input capturing to a callback which lets me capture any keys or mouse movement. I can then use the stored input data in my world update functions. So let's move on to the next step. So updating the world. In order to update the world we first have to have the data for the world to update. So here's how my world data looks. So basically I have this scene object which contains the voxel world, a vector of characters and it has a pointer to the camera. Now we'll get into the world later but let's first have a look at the character data. So the character object basically has some transform data to know where to put the character in the world and where it is. And it has animation data, so it knows which animation is playing. And it has body parts. The body parts are basically a relative position to the player and the scale. And this is also what the animator can use to displace to have character animations. So this is nice and all, we have a world, but how do we update the world? So the way this is done is I have an update method on the scene and this update method will contain all the logic for updating the stuff that's inside of the scene. The scene first updates all the characters with physics. Now stand back because I'm about to show you the most exciting physics you have ever seen. When a player is above 4y, the player is not grounded. When the player is below or on 4y, the player is grounded. The next step is applying player input to the first character in the list. In this update the game checks which keys are pressed and based on that the movement is updated and also the animation ID is updated. For instance is a character walking or standing. And finally the scene applies animation updates to all the characters. This means based on the character's animation ID and for how long it's been active all the body parts are moved to the appropriate location. Okay. So we have a game world and we can update it based on the player input. But we have a bit of an accessibility issue because we can't see it and we cannot hear it. Basically we can't experience the game yet. So how do we render the game? Well, this actually is the most complicated part of the game and that's mainly because this game is 3D. But I will try to explain to you the rendering the best I can. So the way the renderer works in my game is I have a renderer object to which I can pass the scene and then the renderer can figure out how to render the scene. The way it does this is by having meshes for all the different kinds of objects and then it will just render all these things at the positions of the characters. The way it does this is by looping through all the characters and all their body part positions and then rendering the appropriate mesh at the appropriate location. Now besides the characters it also has to render the world. And when we're talking about the world in my game, we have to talk about a voxel engine. But we'll do that in the next video. 